Look at this view today. We are taking this video outside. All right, so this is Winemaking 101. We're getting back to the basics and going to show you everything you need to be a successful winemaker. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this video. So welcome back to the channel. Like I said, we're taking this video outside today. It's such a beautiful day. And this video, it should have been done a long time ago. And I, I just wanted to get back to some of the basics and introductory for some of you beginner winemakers. What do you need? What supplies you need? I'm gonna cover it all in this video. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and let's get right into it. Let's get into this video of this equipment. Racking canes, chemicals, the corks, the corker, spoons. This is everything you'll need. Some of it is optional. I'm going to cover that, but this is what it looks like. And trust me, I know because I emptied everything of my house and brought it to the lake today. So a lot of you have been asking, where do I buy my supplies and where do you get some of these chemicals? I'm going to show you when I go through these supplies, I've put links to every single one down in the comment section. And I went back and I put it on all the wine videos. So if you need tannin or yeast, go to the affiliated Amazon link. It helps the channel when you click on it and buy through there. I'd appreciate it. Check out the guy fishing behind me. Shh, we don't want to scare the fish. All right, and this is cool. It looks like somebody's here shooting a YouTube video. All right, this is all the chemicals you're gonna need to get started in this hobby. Potassium sorbate, which is used to stabilize your wine at the uh, end if you're back sweetened. Pectic enzyme, Camden tablets, which are used to kill bacteria. Then you got bentonite. This is one of my favorites and do not miss it. It's great for filtering your wine. Then you got wine tannin and yeast nutrient to help get that yeast going. And then acid blend, which brings your wine together. And don't forget your wine yeast. I love Red Star wine yeast. It's uh, never failed me. But again, I got links to all these chemicals that you can get on Amazon uh, linked in the description. Make sure you're uh, going that way to order your supplies. All right. This stuff is a must. Sanitizer. You've got to sanitize everything in this hobby. Star Sand works great. I strongly and highly recommend it just because it's going to help you be successful. You don't... All right, so as we go through some of this equipment, I'm going to show you some of the things you need and some of the things that are just going to make your life easier. These are racking canes. These are a must. You've got to buy it. I got a one gallon size and this one will handle the three to five gallon size. So uh, they will come in handy, trust me. And you got to have these carboys. This is what you're gonna uh, rack your wine and filter and get all the sediment out and let the sediment settle to the bottom here that we're gonna try and get out. Again, this is gonna be make your job easier when you're racking because we want the clearest wine possible. Make sure you're watching some of my other videos. I show you exactly how to do that. Carboys, this is a five gallon one. All right, this is an optional, optional one. It's a carboy drying rack. You just sit it down on the ground like this and your carboy goes upside down. Helps to drain the uh, sanitizer out of it and any remaining water, but it's a, a great tool for sure. All right, this one's a must. It's a hydrometer. This is what's going to test your alcohol levels by volume. If you want to know exactly, I strongly recommend one of these. I wouldn't miss this one. And also protective case to help protect it. All right, this is one I probably wouldn't do without. It is a bottle drain to, to empty your bottles after you're sanitizing and letting them dry in here. But you put all your bottles on the top of here uh, this holds like 36 bottles, I think it is, and the water drains out. 
this I wouldn't give up for anything. Again, if you want one of these, the link's at the bottom. A bottle brush is a necessity to clean and sanitize your bottles. You're gonna need this. All right, and this is what we're trying to get to here. You can see how I label. It's not very good. That S means it's sweet or strawberry. This is why I got them all lined up. I have to show you that one time. But this has got MB for my mixed berry. But you need bottles. Look how clear this wine is. This is what we want to get you to. Everybody can do it. It's not difficult. Make sure you're, you're checking out all this equipment. But this is what it's all about. Getting to this beautiful color or this. All right, these I would consider optional, but they're mesh bags. If you're making wine from fruit, this is gonna make it so much easier to get your pulp out. If you're just using juice though, you probably don't need one of these, but trust me, this is gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of additional rackings. Mesh bags, get them. All right, when you're bottling your wine, you can put, if you're gonna drink your wine right away, you might not need this next one, but I don't miss corks. Corks is going to help you preserve your wine for longer periods of time. I have a separate video on what sizes to get. I got eight, nines, and tens. Depending on how fast you're going to drink it is how, what size you might want to get. Um, get corks for sure. All right, you see what I mean about being a beautiful day? Look at these geese just waddling in the lake. Down there you got some fish, but people are just enjoying this lake today. They're doing a little construction here, so the water level is a little low, but uh, it's just magnificent. It's where I want to be. Or like that guy out there in a kayak. All right, these are probably something you already got laying around the house. Measuring cups and spoons because you got to measure your chemicals and your fruit. I love these things. I just buy uh, at the dollar store some cheap ones I just keep in my wine box. All right, this one I consider an optional one because this is what you're gonna float your hydrometer in to get readings. Sometimes your buckets aren't deep enough to float your hydrometer in your buckets, but I find I need this one if I'm making smaller batches like one gallon batches. But if I'm using a three or five gallon batch, I just float the hydrometer right in the bucket. So I don't need one of these for larger batches, just for the smaller ones. There go the ducks. It must be swim time. All right, y'all know you need something to filter your wines. I've got this one. I hate it. I would throw this in the trash, but I'm afraid I'm going to use it one day. I use bentonite to filter all my wine. No filters, no mess. I tried this thing one time, and it was a disaster. I had wine everywhere. I'm going to throw this thing out. Now, when I'm really getting down to the bottom of a carboy and I want to save just a little bit of wine, maybe for drinking that day, I use coffee filters a lot of times just to get that fine particle out at the very end. Uh, it's not needed, but throw it in your box. All right, here's something again I never use. You could try it, use it. It shows you what your acid level should be in your wine. I've never had to do that or any need. I, I think it's just unnecessary. But if you want to get one and try it, let me know if you use one of these acid kits because I'd be curious, what's the purpose? It just seems like a waste of time to me. All right, these are a must. These are your airlocks. This is where you put the water up in here and when you're in your primary fermentation and this thing starts to bubble and go crazy. And you also need the little stoppers at the end. I think they're called bunge, but uh, you will definitely need these. I got links to these in the description below too. So, uh, and then along with that, this again, it's probably not necessary, but when I find I'm making like a two gallon batch and I'm taking the pulp out, sometimes you have leftovers and you can buy these little jugs here that got the little corks in and then you can put these little things here. So now you have a little fermentation. If you want to do small batches of wine, you can do this, but I use it when I'm getting down to the bottom. I already filled my carboy up and I have a little extra. I will put it in here and then do the same thing, rack these out. And then eventually when I'm taking the pulp out of the bigger one, I have this extra to top it off. So a lot of you have been asking, how do you top off wine? Well, if you have extra, do it, put it, you know, don't throw it out, put it in one of these and this can be used for your top off. 
after 30 days of your primary fermentation. So here's one. What is this? It's a pH meter. You could check your pH of your wine too because, and, and a lot of times you use it to check your sanitizer because if the pH gets to, too low, it's not effective anymore. But um, I'm not mixing batches up all the time. That star sand will last a long time. I never use this thing. This is going in the trash too. And this might be something you have at home too. It's a funnel. You're gonna need a funnel for multiple different reasons. And then another thing, this is your wine bottler tip. This just, you would put on your hose here that's probably already on your racking cane. I use the same hose, but this will release the wine into your bottles. As you're pressing down the bottle, the wine will come up, you stop and it stops. This is a must. Using funnel, funnels that way, and especially when you're doing large batches, you know, maybe 20 bottles, 24 bottles you're making, you just go down each one. This is a must, and they're cheap too. All right, and this, I'm getting so many different kinds of wine bottles. I gotta start using these. These are wine tags. Uh, you put your, your wine on here and maybe the date, and you can see how old it is. But I find I just take a marker on, the, on my corks and I put down in there what kind it is, uh, and if it's sweet, semi-sweet or dry. So, but I'm getting too many. I gotta start using these. All right, another optional item that if you're making large batches, these things are gonna come in handy because these five gallon carboys, when they're filled with wine, become very heavy. And you can see, they just attach to your carboy and you grab it by the handle and it makes it so much easier carrying. I gotta carry mine up a flight of stairs when I'm racking it usually. So, uh, unless it's a nice day like today. But yeah, a must have if you're doing large batches, I think. If you're doing small batches, the three gallon or one gallon, probably not necessary. And if you really wanna be a professional, get these. These are your wine caps. You put these on, and I have a separate video how to attach these and the best way to do it with boiling water but these will make your wine look professional. I always put these on if I'm taking them to a friend's house or on a cruise, but uh, yes, professional winemakers are using these. All right, and if you're making a lot of wine, I can't even get this thing whole thing in the frame, but you gotta have one of these. This is the Portuguese bottle corker you got to have it in my opinion I, I got links to the the one i think the hand one but they're knuckle busters this thing just makes your job so easy it's adjustable by bottle size depending on different kinds of bottles but then up here uh you can adjust this thing which you probably can't see you can adjust this thing here of how far you want your corks to go in you want to keep them flush this works great this is one thing i will never get rid of it is a must get yourself a good corker i got a link to this one in the description too all right another must you gotta have paddles i got two different size i got a long one for my five gallon and then i got a smaller for my one gallons these things number one are great for stirring up your must in the primary fermentation and then when I use the bentonite, I use the other end to get that bentonite stirred in. These have multiple purposes, a must. You gotta get, depending what size you want, maybe you wanna get two like I do, cause I do all different sizes. All right, another must, you gotta have fermentation buckets. This is my one I use for my five gallon batches. And you can see here, it's got the measuring on the side, which comes on very handy when I'm mixing up sanitizer. Also got a temperature gauge on here. It'll tell you what the temperature of the wine is. We're going to get into temperature in a separate video. But uh, you got to have one of these. Like I said, this I think it's a six, six or six and a half gallon bucket that I use for five gallon batches because there's a lot of pulp in here that when we take it out, it's gonna be five gallons. All right, and this will come in handy. This is a scrub brush for your carboy. You can see how long this one is. This is for my five gallon, but uh, when you need to get in there and scrub maybe some of that dead yeast off the bottom, this will come in handy. I hate to use it for some reason because you gotta bend it, and but there's no better way that I found. If you did, let me know in the description. I'm sorry, in the comments.
All right, this one's a must. You got to have this. You probably got one of these laying around, but you got to have a log book. Here's my recipe for my orange wine I'm making right now. That I uh, just put a video out a couple weeks ago. I already just racked that one, so that's coming up. Make sure you don't miss that finish of that orange creamsicle wine. But you need to write everything down because if you want to be consistent from the next time, you got something to fall back on. Okay, this is an optional one. I love squirt bottles with some sanitizer in here because when I'm stirring my mead or stirring a bentonite in, spraying this on your stick and letting it sanitize the stick is so much easier than mixing up a batch. So I always keep some in here. It'll last mixed for about two weeks, two, three weeks, but uh, optional, but I wouldn't give it up. I hope you like this video, me showing you all the equipment. I enjoyed making. Like I said, it's a beautiful day. I packed up my truck and put all this equipment out here to do this video because I think it's fun. And I just want you to know some of the minimal stuff. You can get in this hobby fairly cheap if you want to. All my carboys, I got on Craigslist or at a yard sale. I don't buy full price for these. Sorry I've been uh, tied up with my other channel along for the journey. Make sure you're checking that out. I'll put a link to that in the description, but I've uh, been doing a lot of traveling and that other channel's about travel. So if you enjoy that, swing on over. I could always use more subscribers. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Till the next time, I'm hoping to get that orange creamsicle wine done. And I got a couple other batches in the process. You're going to see that coming too.